Oh, Cadian's going to make some noise himself. We have an interesting pistol. Chad, you said to expect some curiosities from Heroic, and they've certainly pulled one to start with. They're ready for this. They have looked at the demos. They are absolutely, perfectly equipped to deal with one mid, two under. Borup beheads Nexa and all onto Amanek with nothing but a P250. He's got the aim, but he hasn't got the brain. No, certainly not anymore. Stown blows it out of his head, and we are into round two. A very clean start for the CT side. They're going to like that. Lots of mid spawns for the second round of G2, but no bomb plant. Expecting to see that full eco running somewhere. Maybe even pull out those deagles if they fancy it. And he, he always looks frustrated. There are some players that yeah. every time we cut to a cam, oh. they, like, they speak through their body. Uh, others, much less so. It's harder to contain as well when you're in your own bedroom. Uh, and I guess you forget oh, that yeah, the camera's there right. and everybody's mm -hmm. watching. But Lauren, I just want to say thank you for the validation right there. I, I, that really means a lot to me. Um, you're welcome. Well, she said, you, Chad, you said in the pregame, you know, expect... Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. listening. Sometimes no, I, no, no, it's just it, I need it at the moment. You're not used to No, at the moment. No, well, <laughs> sometimes they don't. Wow, wow Alex. Jeez, all right. Well, I'm glad we've got a therapist in to deal with our issue. <laughs> this is oh. looking very promising for Cadian. Oh, yeah. Makes himself a quick 1,200. Nico grabs himself another six. So we are into uh, the nitty gritty now. We've got that one quick swept under the rug. It will be your AK-47s in the full nine yards. So just look at the spawns that Heroic have here. We see Cadian, he's at the very back with the AWP. The SMGs with close to window spawns, they could, if they want to jump out window and go for an underpass or mid push, and then Cadian could be playing over towards Ticket with the AWP. A lot more teams are playing spawn-based Counter-Strike these days to give themselves every little advantage. But doesn't look to be the case. Yeah. Let's off to Next one. Oh, look at that ramp aggression. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the cheeky play when they throw that incendiary is they're using the the, for lack of a better word, incandescence of that incendiary to peek over it. Really can be difficult. If you're close to the flames and they're far from the flames, you you have a peak advantage. Now, this is the same push they did, but they did it straight away last time. This time it's a little bit slower. Almanex got such a keen little heady angle. It will be a problem though if they walk up this left-hand channel. Oh, thank you for the X-ray toggle. We're living in Almanex POV now, and he's managed to get both of them. That is colossal. And immediately, I mean, this now needs some CT aggressions, Lauren. We need to see Tessas taking some initiative and leveling the equilibrium in to some extent. This looks like a good chance for it. Kenny's going to jump on that bench and it's like he's uh, got a chance to try and get the elevation towards short. I can see where Kadian goes. Because he was over by A, kind of sitting back by ticket booth, very deep towards CT, and he's posting around towards B. So I like this. Massively open. Is this just a gamble if they come yeah. this way? If not, we just save? They have to. They have to go for a play like this. If it is the B finish, they have three to defend against five. It's better odds than if they were strung out 1-1-1. One, one, one. And if the bomb goes on down, G2 Esports are going to see that A is clear. The best thing they can do now is defend as a unit. Try not to give up these guns, but the hunter's already on. You can see right now, the man with the perfect name for the job is in the underpass making his way and his presence still concealed. So he's going to lock them in here. Curious if anyone else from G2 is going to come on over and give him a hand. How much freedom do you think he's going to have here? Is he going to go for a full walkabout or is he just looking to contain? Well, the thing is, because it is only their first round on the board and they don't have a huge amount of a bank built here, you don't want to give away too many guns and you're not quite sure what type of setup you're dealing with. So it looks like he's more than happy to allow them to hold on to these weapons. And there was some bonus guns carried across. You can see Nico's bank balance and Bowrups, 3600 and 2450 respectively. They will be able to buy going into the next. Mm. So it's always a question, you know, do you want to go and risk it and try and take the guns away, ruin them for the following round? Or do you want to start building a bank for yourself? And well, the answer is putting that money in the back pocket. They're being a bit more like me, quite frugal. I don't know, you treat us to a burrito or a coffee once Yeah, I, I, I buy the little things, but I, I save all my big money. Big money. My big money. Got it. That's really nice from Amanek. And, and is, is this a tendency you could expect someone to read into maybe Heroic that they like to make these pushes? Is this a common factor or is that simply just well played by Amateur to keep that possibility in mind? One thing I've noted, well, we'll get into it next round. This yeah, will be a fast day round push. Woof. Tessus fully blind. His incendiary does half the work for him. Next are gone as well. Forced to coordinate his teammates from the back seat in this round. <laughs> it's like the opposite of last round. Two kills immediately and then everything slows on down. 
Yeah, it's a peculiar pace we've we, we've found to start off our third map. It's a nice M4 skin I haven't seen before. Chad's got that one. I had to look at it last night after See he said he bought it. I don't really? like it too much. It's a little overzealous. It's a little creepy. over the top. You know, a house of That's a, a bomb delivery. Oh, that's oh, even dropped a little bit closer, so they can't even get around the side to pick it up. That's pretty rough. Yeah, Amanek. Oh, he's hiding in the little corner. Knows the flash well. out. Oh, Amanek, nice work to at least get that bomb there. So, game back on, I guess, 2v3. 50 seconds. Just because the exchanges happened so early, there's still a fair amount of time. Look at the pace Kenny's picked up, too. Straight through towards A, but the problem is there's going to be rats about in the building. They're everywhere. Yeah, look at the, the angles they're holding A from. It's CT and T spawn. That's a funky one. On the ramp, it's going to be Kenny. Eliminating one of those aforementioned threats. A 2v2 now. This was a 2v4. So, Kenny and Amanek uh. burning. Oh, the spread gets the frag. Borup. He didn't have to lift a finger for that one. Oh, and Kenny's found a very precise headshot. Stown. Still ears ringing after that one, I assume. Borup calls the bluff on the fake. Planting open. This would be the perfect. And freest of frags. Borup. He wins the round for his squad. That is all him. His molly forced the plant to stop. He even got the frag and now a second to put three on the board for Heroic. To taking a quick look at the top right, you'll see how con um, divisive the victories were on each other's picks. So you can see 16-7 for both. This was Tessus' double. Look at that. Fully blind. Just putting this cross there in the right place. That last second spread. Look how unfair that was. He risked there, didn't he? He re re took a chance in the flames right there. Uh, just with the note, Lauren, with that halls push we were talking yep. about a little bit earlier, I think that CT-sided teams go for plays like this because when they default, have a look at the minimap right now, mm -hmm. you're normally sending at least three players towards middle on a default to get mid-control. You have one individual normally worrying about the A play and you have one worrying about the B push. This time round, G2 actually have all five members over towards the mid corridor. Two through the underpass, and three were top middle, and now they're going to drop back. But that means if they want to clear out and go back to A, they have to worry about pushes through apps. They have to worry about pushes through the A ramp. And look at the forward position that Borup is in. So if they do channel through middle, you could even let them into the site because Borup can play spoiler and force them to have to look left and right of the bomb site as coming up through that connected position. Love seeing any team push those extremities. It always is such a fun thing to see. As you said, it kind of changes like the whole dynamic of how sites play out. But it looks like a different approach this time. Way heavier lean towards B and Kenny could be at the forefront of it. Boosted up. A missed shot gives Kaden a new lease of life and takes life as well. Jack's gone. Re-peeking in and Kenny just collects. Down unchecked for the swing from Amanek is perfect. They got their flight paths eye in doubt. It is without a kink, without a hitch. Tessus, perhaps he is feeling a little kinky. Going to catch the cross onto bench and that was his only avenue in. He'll be backing away or at least trying to fake the steps. G2 to respond with a nice round in kind. I will admit, though, that that round was... Uh, it's, it's always nice to see, kind of just echoing the sentiment of you, the, uh, the taking the early space, the pushing the extremities, as you put it, Lauren. By taking that information early, and even though not being dissuaded by Amanek's previous double in that, right. by doing so, they're getting that info so quick that they can, they can, through process of elimination, look at their potential strat book pages of G2. Who was the infamous player who kept pushing B halls? Who was there? Was one player who was it a Polish player? I'm trying to think of it. Like Snacks Wonderland kind it of. It might be. I'm trying to think. There's one player who I always remember pushing the extremities, especially on the B side, being a pain in the ass, allowing everyone to kind of almost over rotate because he took so much room. I really need to find that name. It's going to haunt me a little bit here. I don't know if I can go back in my time machine. Yeah, this is a while ago. This is brain cells are running real low at the moment. <laughs> this so. was a long time ago. But as I said, if you guys at home remember, there was one person that really stood out to me doing it. But my brain is is garbage these days. We ban all neck beards. Pardon? Then we need to ban all neck beards. I, I mean, I mean, there goes half our audience, Chad. I didn't mean the people. I meant the actual neck beard. <laughs> oh, that's a whiff to Molly right there. But this oh, was a force by. He's up and in. He's been heard. That's for sure. Oh dear, that's not nice. Alex had a bit of a mare there, hasn't he? Really? He's handled it aggressively. He was like, I've, I've <laughs> "That's the way to up. put it." Full commit. Now, Bomb T spawn. Any further commitment from Jax would be a foot fault. He has not. They do start, start to orientate themselves back towards the A site. They'll leave Hunter Ooh. around Connector to have that contact. But Borup, if they both come down this low ramp, he's got a good shot at one here. Oh, oh 
great reaction from Borup. Bloody hell. That disadvantage from G2 is waning. Another frag for Heroic. It's Cadian. Immediately traded. Nexa. One versus two now. Already two kills to his name. Let's see what he can get. He's got the full util kit. And Nico does just have a Mac 10, so it's it's a little weird. 38 seconds. Nexa gonna clear as he goes. Checking fully on CT. Now no one's there, of course. We know where Stown is, and now he's got the rifle. Oh Nico's here. read this. Nico, why is your brain so big? How's Nico read this? This could be insane. What? Is is prep for the, I get maybe timing, and maybe the fact that they've cleared down the ramp. That was ten head play from Nico. I don't know how else he predicts that. That was wild. I understand that Stown was on the flank there, and worst case scenario, they were able to pincer in a two on one situation with that A plant. But predicting the fact that Nexa would go with that almost immediately, that right there is some heads up counter strike from Nico and a massive force by round there for Heroic to be throwing on the board. Up to 4 2 now. And this shot here from Burr up, he was aiming in the wrong direction. This pulled down onto the head of Jax. Nice stuff. Right eye peak coming in handy right there. And now, well, G2. Now we'll be down to the pistols. We have a Deagle. Couple of Glocks, P250 and a Tech 9 in play, and back towards top mid they go. No flashes to assist, so this is just going to come down to their aim and hoping they hit the shots. Oh, oh, the double, maybe even triple dink. Throwing things into disarray for a moment. Cadian trying to grab the reins before he runs away from them. Tessa's had enough for head armor there, but opted just to go for the Kev, so. Maybe a little bit of a mistake being made with the buy, but it shouldn't be the end of the world. This seems so easy to win these rounds, but dangers are everywhere. And yeah, you have pistols to do come through with these players. You just have to remain at high alert. Right. All the time, and it can be exhausting when they, just by surviving, are winning small victories every time you deploy mm -hmm. utility, every time you throw an incendiary and it's a threat to the bomb or a threat to the round. If Kenny's making that M4 work again, he will not, and Eco makes sure of that. So Amanek with only the Deagle. I'm sure some scavenging could be done. With 28 seconds, a bomb plant would be his dream. Maybe B will be his priority. So it's down. Going for his soft rotate, it will be down to Amanek winning his duel. He's got one duel to win, and he gets his team 800 bucks per player in round loss. 10 seconds. He's not going to get a chance to plant, I'm afraid. Has to make a sound cue now, so yeah. it should be all over Red Rover. GG. It'd be a kill. He takes the rifle. Not even that. Lovely hold. Heroic. Whew, we could be in a, a world where we have a full 30 round game. G2 heroic for a spot in the playoffs. After all of that Stompy Wompy winning our own map. Stompy Wompy. We might have some drama here on Mirage. It does look like heroic have come to play. We're pretty flagrant over here, Lauren. We make words up. I love it so much. And it makes sense. I, when you say Flompy Wompy, I'm like, yep. Flompy Wompy? You know what I was saying? Yeah. Stompy Wompy? Stompy. Yeah. I mean, it's all the same, isn't it? Oh, it's close. But they, they have very different meanings in our language. Oh, they do? Yeah. So what, what's a... Well, Flompy... Flompy sounds like he's messed the nade up. Yeah. Oh, he flomped Oh, uh, he flomped it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're right. Whereas Stompy Wompy, it's like they're kind of, they're being playful and, and performing well. <laughs> anyway, thanks for uh, being thanks patient. Yeah, with us, you humoured us. Uh, you also, she didn't pull the eyebrow, no, but she but did. But you knew the eyebrow I was referring yeah. to earlier. Why are yeah. you talking about my eyebrows so much? I'm really not that judgmental. Because you can break people's hearts with a, a lift of an eyebrow, That's Lauren. true. That's wildly untrue, Alex. Uh, don't project your insecurities on me. Yeah? <laughs> Not really my. Yeah, it's no, not, it's not really my mo projecting my insecurities. <laughs> That's mine. That's Chad. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got you mixed. Uh, up. You, you attacked Chad's core. But you, you directed it at me. So <laughs> it still hurt. Don't you worry. It's good. Oh, full flash. Kenny doesn't care. Come on, Kenny. Cadian will happily upgrade from his fallen comrade. Tessas needs to get one or two here. He's going to have pressure applied. Puts out his own smoke there to hold them at bay. And now the Molotov is to flush him into the open. Uh, He's burning. Uh, ah, he can't find anywhere. Going? There is no what? safe haven, but in the chaos, he thrives. He needs some help. He needs escape route. He does manage to get away. Tessas, mad respect for survival there. That looked like a death sentence. And he even takes Kenny out of the equation. I love that. 
Ooh, that looks like a nice and easy one from Jax. Going to be throwing them out towards the A site. Looks like it's going CT of all places. It missed. It did. So, not stealing that lineup. <laughs> nice trade from the down, though. The flash was so, so good from Nexa to set up Jax so well. So, so well for that. And the last two CTs, where are they? Kind of stuck towards top mid for one. That's Kadian over there. And Bore up. Just in middle as well. Ooh, ah, they might go. go for it now. I yeah. think now it's were, game on. Yeah. I thought they were about to start heading to spawn yeah, to save. Yeah, it like it. All right. Kadian's got the AWP now. They've got the first step. That's probably put a little oh, bit Oh, they're in transition. Oh, they don't know. Do Wait, did they not see him walking away from the site? They could do something dirty There's with a this. Smoke There's in a play. smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Kadian. He's got the smoke of the flash. Do they even realize, though? You're going to clear sight and you might not have time. And now Nex has come back going, hey, oh. there's a problem. He gets it done. Kadian does get one back, but by now the clock is ticking and Kadian needs to get out with that. Oh, he gets stuck and he's away. There was a very fine margin where we could have had a ninja defuse. We could have had an easy save. So many small changes there. Heroic should buy right now. Look at the money on the G2 side of things. They don't have a lot to work with. Three players with under 4K. Next, we'll be able to drop a gun. Jax can buy an AK-47 of his own, but the buy won't be fantastic. And that is exactly what's happening on the heroic side of things. The saved ADBP of Kadian, that's enough to allow them to think they can take the fight. And that was very, very quick from Kenny. Even blind gets Nico to kick things off. And that kind of an opening... That's what you want to see. Frustration from Kenny. It's probably due here. There was multiple teammates around him in middle there and nobody could protect him. But this round, this one probably counts for one or two if G2 are able to convert it. Sound cue for Tess as he knows he's got company. Namanek's going to be flashed. Oh, it's perfect from Heroic. Kadian sets him up, lines him up, and it's Tessus to bolt the knockout blow. Just like that, another... Rather reminiscent start to these rounds. Two early frags and a distinct disadvantage for G2 this time. Oh. They're locked out by this deep smoke. I'm surprised Tessus is so willing to stand in that open. Looks like he'll back away as the smoke does fade. He knows that advantage is theirs. Doesn't want to squander it for no reason. But now the T-side have to clear everything so meticulously. He's bought so much time for the CTs here and he's just kind of just lightly peeking that tiny little ledge. When does he see him? He got enough. Oh, that's a brave one. Get out of there. Just about makes it away as Kadian's going to be called oh, in. He's, he, looks, he looks uncomfortable. He's readjusted. He gets one, but one slip through. Jax is already out. He's down. Tessus is there. This combo, it looked so hectic, so terrifying, but they held it. Yeah, Tessus and Kadian, the dastardly duo on B, have completely ripped that round out of G2's playbook. And you said it was going you know, to be with the, the force, if you will, the sacrifices financially, but they to punish G2 in the same state, this could really catapult their CT side to some big numbers here. It's up against the Deagle armor. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if this is converted by Heroic, we're looking at seven, we're looking at eight, just to get across that double digits on the first half. Certainly not out of the realms of possibility. That is a big fat if, though. More than capable of doing damage. Amonek's got his favorite weapon in the game. Yeah, it's a big call here from G2. They don't want to allow Heroic's bank balance to tick on up. And that's what I was saying, where it could be worth one or two rounds because nobody really has control of the economy right now. Heroic, they're still not working with a big bank whatsoever. They lose this one. They might think about going for a force buy yet again. They need to make sure that they're able to convert right here. And holding on to their utility, as we can see, is probably one step in the right direction. Flash over. Burrup pushed off the line. Kadian dropping down as well. It scares the life out of me these sort of rounds. So much danger, but these deep smokes. Nico plays ahead of it and it allows Nexa a little bit of room to work here, and he's going to bound forward towards that rifle. Didn't K didn't even stop the plant. G2 get a lot out of this with a little. And the CTs. Ah, they've allowed for a lot of those after plant positions to be adopted. They will just flood through CT. I prefer that to anything else. Lots of mollies and smokes to work with here, though. So ramp will be smoked off. Molly to Tetris. They can focus their attention on Palace and the smoke push. They need to be jiggling that. They need to be faking that. No one's got jungle info yet. I'm getting a bit nervous here, Lauren. Wrong. Yeah, time's of the essence, and now Hunter's made it even harder. This is an excellent round from the T's, wow. and it just felt so flat from Heroic. They've been outplayed from the very start. These shots don't matter, and he may not live here. What a bit of what a bit of play from G2. I, I'm surprised they got away with that, honestly.
All right, gang, well, we're going to jump into Skybox just quickly here. I want to show you uh, the hero of that previous round. So I've got a nice big angle there. You can see Cadian in this window position, and Tessus has dropped out there into underpass. And what I'm going to do is play this out. You'll see the flash leave his hands as Tessus calls for the Q. It's in the air. I'm going to change the camera. Oh, I've the wrong camera. Come on, oh, Chad. You can see it here. It is. They're both completely white. And then Tessus steps out for two big freebies. So I wanted to highlight that one. I thought it was a nice little play coming in from Heroic. Good stuff. But yeah. that round just there, not good stuff. Would have been much cooler, Chad, if you got the camera right the first Sorry, time. Sorry, guys. No, it's all right. I just wanted to let you know. Room for improvement and all Next that. Next time. Always. Yeah, that was a, that was a really weird round. I, I don't know what to do with that sort of thing. Pry. I, I mean, yeah, that, I know, that was I heroic about to start running away with the CT yeah. side. G2 make a very, very ballsy call to be bringing only Deagles and Kevlar Vest into a fully sport up CT side. It just seemed like they, they found a gap. The fact that that bomb could go down with after one kill, clearly they identified a, a heroic yeah. stack. It looks like Kenny's taken Jax down uh, in quick succession with Stown. In fact, one bullet through his teammate <laughs> into Stown. They're normally very friendly, Jax and Kenny, so hopefully... Hopefully it's all okay. It's all right. No bad blood. They can hug and make up. I'm sure they will. Well, they are French after all. I'm sure they will. What does that mean? Well, they always hug when they see each other. I don't know if you can at the moment. It's probably against Those the rules. Can, yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they'll just uh, make it up, have some cheeses. <laughs> I had a great story about cheese and... Uh, yeah, fromage. It's a fromagerie fromage. in France, mm. I think it's called. Did we... Omelette du fromage. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of like platters of meat and cheese just for snacking. I think that there's a fancy word. What's for the those? name for that? Like a snacky charcuterie platter? Charcuterie board, something? A charcuterie board. Yeah. Of course, the Lauren gets it with her enunciation. My what dearest auntie say? must put the figs out with the correct figs. cheese. I, I have become like an animal for these sort of things, though. It's like I went over for Christmas to my family's, yeah. uh, you know, they did a lovely platter, of course, as we see the round wrap up. Um, and yeah, figs really go well with the right sort of like cheese. A fig Newton or like a straight up old fashioned? Straight fig. up fig. Whoa. Straight up fig. Just on the table. Uh, apparently, Danish butter is a very big thing on the right type of bread. I don't know what Danes and their butter. An uh, iconic it, combination. It's, it's a different world out there, yeah, Alex. I don't get Ooh, it. This is, this is um, the uh, the salt from the Philippines, I hope, or whatever else. <laughs> the, the Himalayan salt, Himal I believe it is. Yeah. Himalayan salt. Shout out to Bard Olsen. Oh, the little his, pink one. Yeah. yeah. Exotic peppers. Exotic peppers. We were talking about. Alex just pounds on black pepper, doesn't care what it is. We were talking about pink diamonds the other night, remember? That's right. The Argyle diamonds. Who was talking about them? Mike, I believe his name was. Who? Yeah, but I, I remember. I know we had this conversation. I couldn't tell you where, when, or was it on broadcast? No, he was a manager, remember? Ah, yes. Yeah. Ah, yes, I yeah. remember now. Yeah. So as we get this one underway, I've seen the double AWP uh, purchase coming through here from that of Heroic. Now, Stown will be AWPing over towards that mm. B bomb site, normally getting up in towards B apps. That means they can guarantee their free information right there. And Tessus will take the role of playing over towards the short position. Kadian will be in float. He likes to drop his own Molotov in the window to deal with the T-sided smoke. But he doesn't actually have a Molotov this round. So let's see how they want to approach this one. Is that actually going to be two members from G2 heading over towards the apartment straight away, two towards top mid, and one dealing with the A push. Mm. That's a start. Oh, he's middle. Yeah, I've got to say, a bit of a switch up on prediction, but you know what, Chad? We won't call you out on it. We're nice people. I'm sure you'll clarify what the change means and what it entails later. I'm curious where the bomb is as well for the T's, as they do work their way through middle, taking their time. We have the player in Nexa posted up towards A Apartments. As the CT's super deep on this one. Look at CT, you've got Nico all the way back. You've got uh, Stown just kind of playing up by ticket booth now. Stown is the difference maker. That is, if he chooses to actively fight it. No one's holding his palace, so he may be dissuaded from even holding that line. Injury to the close jungle corner. That enables them to leave Connector without being so worried about that. I quite like that yeah. addition to advance. But Borup nearly finding ding, ding. two. Does dink Amanek. That's going to really soften him up and favor a heroic defense here. Does look like they're digging their heels in in this final 30. Yeah, surprised Nexa didn't clear with that Molly. Maybe feeling it was for something else. Maybe there's another intention. But with 25 seconds, he's kind of having to move fast about this. There isn't a great deal of time. So Kenny has to kind of go out as is. And those CT players are going to be surely watching this. They've got a slither to work with. And that may be enough. I don't know what Kenny can Whoa. do. 
takes the scalp off of one and now it's game back on, but two more plays in CT. I don't know how he just got that bomb plant. I'm really surprised they let him plant. And that shot could have very well connected. This could spiral, it still can, when Kenny's got his signature weapon in his hand. Kadian eliminates him with the very same. Amanek, that tag from Borup could have ramifications and it does. Nico can finish him off neat and tidy, no stress. It could very well have been a one duel otherwise. And they'll pick up both orbs, that makes a uh, whole lot of sense. I'll put them at 7-5. What's the uh, G2's financial jibbly-jabbly right now? The plant's going to help a lot, so they should be able to get a buy round going here. Shouldn't be too many dramas whatsoever. Just a little bit quizzical about that setup. Nico was watching apps and then he moved away for some reason after Stown found that kill. Everything could have been honky-dory. There was no need for a plant. There was no need for it to get down to a 2v2 scenario right here. But... They won the round, and that's all that really matters in the scheme of things. First to 16 and all that jazz. So when we're going to see this buy come out, guns will be shuffled across on the G2 side. There was two individuals who had just under enough to get the AK-47 Oh, it's out. fast. Look at those smokes. They're already flying through the sky. My goodness, they're running ahead of them. Ahead of their own smokes, but it cost them a great deal of health with the nades. Hunter's already at CT. Now, this is terrifying pace coming out from the CTs. They're looking a little bit baffled, but sitting deep. They're not really taking these fights. They're holding back. They're going to play for the retake, because what else are you going to do when the pace was so quick to this? Now, when the smokes dissipate, they're right there, and already the kills come in. This is curious. Yeah, Are they I, both through smoke? I, yeah. Neither of them saw who they killed. They'll take it, though, any day of the week. Hard for G2 to really hold on to this one, and especially now they've lost their round-the-world player. All on to Hunter. Three players from CT. Finds the first on to... Oh! Boy, it was nearly, Kenny. nearly the multi. Kenny to clutch. He does have a chance, but the flick's not there. Borup is, and it's eight for Heroic. A fantastic change of pace from G2, but Heroic handle it with an, uh, an air of calm. There's two kills through the smoke. smoke. Yeah, like that. You got, They're gifts right there. They are absolute gifts. That happening, them losing the site so quickly, G2 must have been feeling like they had that round in the absolute bag because when Heroic tried to play retake against the Deagles previously, they lost that round, remember? I was starting to get uh, flashbacks. Now, Penny is the final kill of the round. It's hard to re-pick that position as an AWP player if you're not hitting every shot. It's very, very difficult. It will be some upgraded pistols here. Amanek has invested an absolute truckload of money, but it will be the B set piece. We've got Bo up that Tessus and Stown to deal with this. Hero Mac 10, I guess. Oh, here they come. Yeah, and they've already lost a great deal of health, but they've lost a defender. Stown's going to be forced to do a whole lot here with his defensive orb. The rotation's coming in, but the cavalry's oh. late, and Kenny's quick. Quick smoke on towards Kitchen. They want to get out. Kadian's got an orb. It's not ideal. And this 3v3 could really spiral. Nexa's got an upgrade. His P250's fat, and he does find Borup. This is a problem, and it's all Nexa. We'll go down eventually. But the damage inflicted, this was essentially a half buy. I don't know how Heroic, Heroic can explain a loss of this round. I don't know not what Nico can do. A smoke oh. hole. Oh, it's gone too far. Oh, that's two rounds now that G2 have snatched away with only pistols and a MAC-10 in tow. Heroic really could have been setting themselves up for here for 10 rounds at least. <sighs> This is a weird game, it feels like to me. Like, some of the pacing to this is so off kilter. We've seen some of these weird rounds going back super brawly or messy, but it's not as well. There's, there's also like a bit of a balance to it. It makes sense, but it's just very hard to quantify in that regard. Eight to six, and it looks like a very hefty lean towards A. The bomb is still at spawn. Amalek's back there, but Kenny gonna connect on towards Borup. That's a big name to be taken away from that A side. He's been ever present towards CT, but now it's gonna go down to Nico. Just the SMG, but revenge. There's Jax from the previous round getting uh, he won back against Nico. You do love to see it. Everyone crosses their T's and dots their I's these days, Lauren. There's no so more Counter-Strike where you don't, uh, you don't make sure everything's cool before you head on in. And now, well, Heroic, they are going to need some absolutely miracle Schwan digs to be able to make round number 15 even remotely competitive, Kenny. 55. They're everywhere. A and B. Why not? I don't know what to make of this game. It just feels so backwards to me sometimes. It's, it's enjoyable, but it's definitely a, a different tempo to what I expected. I'm enjoying the faster Counter-Strike that we've been seeing. Not so much methodical, slow-paced CS, but right now with only, what, 35 seconds left to defuse the bomb. No defuse kit. Katie and the only man standing. That's seven. That is, and I'm sure 
A rather rousing team talk from coach of Heroic and part-time deity Hunden. He's going to have to step in and get these boys back on the straight and narrow. It's competitive, but G2 feel like they're the ones with the wind in their sails as we head and sail to our final half. Getting a whole lot out of a very little set of buys. Two rounds could have very well gone the other way had Heroic remained vigilant. Could be looking at a 10-5 half, but the Heroics from G2, if you'll pardon the pun, have kept things as close as can be. Let's see if the T side bodes bell to start things off. Cadian will be getting his troops in a double smoke lineup. The Flash is to fall over the roof as well. And they've actually stacked B here. So it will just be Jax the uh, Canary. And, well, that Canary is... Get out of the coal mine. Final cheap, yeah. Kenny does well to actually find one and get away. Yet to see that bomb down, so... We've got a real round here. It's about to get a bit deathmatchy as the smokes fade. It is just Amonek smoke to cause more of uh, a nuisance. And he has got a kit on that, so expect to see mm. the only reason he'll deploy that is if he can get on the bomb. Oh. Yeah, good shout. Uh, it's down. Oh! <laughs> banger from Nexa. Why is he so good at pistols? He did that on Vertigo as well. I'm liking this player. I'm gonna trying to get closer to being relevant here. Next up, pow powering forward again. That's another head. Hunter comes in. This is looking very good for G2 at this point. Kaden's going to have to do something wondrous, but he's been spotted. Nexa having none of it. The man is incredibly good at these rounds. I set a note in my phone to swap out my USP. It doesn't work uh, like that. E2K. No, no, no. no? no. no but it looks... It, I know it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, let me tell you the USP for most of, for most of us is going to get the crispier one taps. The P2K, when Nexa uses it, it makes it look good. That's just because he, uh, he's got the poise, the polish. I have neither of those. No. Nah, nah. Try out the P2K. Try it out tonight. I'm going to take Should it for a spin. Go? Yeah. All right. I don't know. I don't have a cool skin for the P2K, so well, that's a I've big got problem. Something. I Could you, trade you we'll, something. We'll do some yeah, chopping yeah, we'll and changing. Chat's Force got by. loads, mate. I do have loads. Force by coming in here from Heroic. AK's being dropped, and that's due to the plant that came on through. So two AKs, a scout. Two Deagles going up against two MP9s. Silenced M4. UMP and the Famous in Kenny's hands. And up close and personal towards the A ramp here. Uh, they've gestured towards middle. And now they're corralling back towards B. So Nexa, he might get some action yet again. Here we go. Nexa, always good in these rounds, Alex. But they've got to check it, right? Oh, he's so blind. Ah, he's trying to get across. I like the attempt. It was the only way to survive or at least give it a good go. Amanek, though, this is his weapon. This is his domain, and he demands you leave. It's Kenny that's alongside him, shouting from the back lines and shooting too, because he's got himself three. For a third, but Nico removes it, and maybe even another chance, but Amanek knew he had to close the gap and does so with ease. That is the ninth for G2 as they continue to run with the momentum. That's two in a row for G2. Should be a save here from Heroic. Wouldn't make much sense going for yet another force buy unless they have an amazing pocket strat in the most played out map in the history of CSGO. Big Mirage fan here. You don't think Dust 2 is the most played out? Nope. Just because they changed the doors around? They uh, they reskinned it, Lauren. That's enough for me. <laughs> so this one here, Lauren, this map, honestly. Chad harbors so started. much hatred for this map. Why? It's I mean, did you not see how like upset he got when we told him we just played it in a matchmaking game? Oh, you're right. That's how. That's how Why much. Why do you dislike it so much? Look at it. What? Oh, uh, right. rule of three that applied to most search and destroy maps. No, it's no. a classic. It's no. Uh, the rules of it all. Coast on right. Whoa, more up. Maybe a plant. Cadian would be very that's happy with that. This is an HE. Almanac's gonna give it a good bit of topspin, but it's late. And that doesn't mean anything. cadian has got a smirk on his face as he starts to turn cold. They got the bomb down. And that will give Heroic all of the cash to splash into the uh, business end of our Mirage, no matter how much our Australian analyst seems to hate it. That's all right. I like watching it. I just don't like playing it. Why?
It's just played out, Lauren. I'll explain. I, I can do his argument for him. Oh, okay, you've yeah. heard it enough. He's seen it so many times. Right. Everyone knows how to play it. The same things are happening. The same um, priorities for each team on each T side. There is no dynamic choices. You know how on Nuke, stale. everyone's doing the same so things. So what's the de what's the deciding factor? Take the map out of the pool and add a new one. It's been in no, not, basically not the entirety not, of. No, CSGO. I mean like what defines a winner from a loser? So and if everyone can operate the, at the same the, level. The way Mirage has worked for for so long now is the battle for mid control. They send three T's huh? there early. They get a kill. They then. Can group up and go anywhere they want. They like hello smokes. That's lovely. You don't need me anymore to analyze Mirage. Everybody can. I'm just a bit bitter, Chad. I've been spent so much time with Chad's venom. I can just, <laughs> I can just spit it out at any moment's notice. Imagine just having fun on a map. What a concept. What a concept this A ramp play has been. Look at the amount of tension he's drawing over there, but oh. Kenny's not having any of it. But he does eventually fall through from Connector. And now the last two players are kind of being held irrelevant here from CT, but Amanek fancies getting in on the action. He's played ahead of what Flash. he expected. Nexus there on towards Nico. Oh, if you got that, it was game back on. Now it's on Nexa, and it's that one step too far. A very important round there and a great opening from Katie. And Alex, you said you wanted more from him going into a map like Mirage. Well, he has 15 kills. 14 of those, I do believe, came within that first half. So finding some impact here. And not too little too late because Heroic, they're still well and truly in this one. They can convert yet another in a row. It's a good way to start applying some pressure to that CT-sided economy. You can see the fan cams here. Everybody at home having a gnarly old time. Flags have come out now, have they? Yeah. Curious positioning. This is the first tactical timeout of G2 at round 20 of our final map. Going to be a chance for Malek, one of the most highly regarded coaches in competitive Counter-Strike at the moment. We'll get to see that opener from KD and he goes through their own smoke. And that little jiggle from Hunter that typically is nothing more than an info jiggle has cost him his life and potentially the round. You can see a little bit of disbelief from him as he coordinates and communicates. So we prepare ourselves for the last push 10 rounds maybe even some more if we keep this the close all the way i am seeing some sacrifices chad that's sorry ump yeah. double famas amanek dropped the awp over to kenny here and he has a good spawn so we want to see how he wants to apply this one as he will be heading over towards the a site with it this buy is still pretty deadly from g2 even though it was cobbled together and cobbled together in the last few moments okay oh, he's ahead of the smoke again if he gets amanek they might just go on this he's up he's exposed if Kaden, oh. ooh, he's got to find the timing uh, he decides to make it very clear the AWP is present in apps. Draws the utility. There all you go. Of it. That's every single piece that Amanek had gone with still a minute 25 left on the clock. So Kadian's job, even though he didn't find a frag, is done. That means if they want to go back to hit this B-bomb site late in the round, they can. They've left Amanek on an island here and they're still doing a four-man A lean. We've got one player towards Ticket, one over towards the balcony slash shadow position and two in connector. So Heroic might be stepping into a trap here because normally if you're going to force that B player to use out so much utility, he needs a babysitter. Lamanex home alone. Let's see who the filthy animal is today. Shots. Hunter. Tessus. Looking good. Amanek so consistent with the UMP in close quarters. Cadian on the quick scope. That should open up B. This game plan has worked wonderfully here for round 20. The bomb plant yet to happen and the cross being held. Oh. Go on, Kenny. Gets one more bite. One more chance. He might be flashed. Might be mollied. He's going to stand his ground as long as he can. He knows oh. it's a valuable shot. Misses it. And game on. That was it. That was the second he had to make that shot. And now with Nexa dying on short, these two have suddenly run out of gas. There's not much left in the tank, so it's time to peel away from this and try and keep those guns. But Borup might have other ideas. Oh, the timing You can hear this, that. surely. Surely. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> well, Borup's going all the way around here to deal with Kenny. I thought he would have heard Jax up close and personal towards that connector position, but now... It feels like they will let them hold on to these rifles. Both teams desperately need to hold on to the guns that they have here. We will be tied up at 10-10. A nice round there from Heroic, but once again, Kadian appears to be the hero. Those two frags with the AWP, one towards middle and then one on that catwalk position. Integral. But Kenny with the AWP, it's always dangerous. To let him hold on to that, to let him keep that weapon, 22 kills to his name right now. Here is the first. And the trade on to Amanek is the second, and that was the opening to the B site right here. 
wonder if they force by yet again behind Kenny and Jax's saved guns here. It, it'd probably be advisable just to go for a partial buy, maybe upgrade some pistols so that in the future you can get the guns out. And that appears to be what they're doing. Actually, Eco from Nexa oh. and Amanek. I mean, we've seen Kenny win rounds on his own many times. It's certainly not out of the realms of possibility. And then Jack's aggression puts another weapon into the G2 hands. Stown's going to deny it, though. Quickly there to ensure nothing really slips through the net. But pound for pound, there is still Kenny. And that is the swing factor here. But on the other side, <laughs> Kadian seems to have a good idea of maybe where he is. That's quite a fun prospect. Now... And he's going to peel away. He's kind of in charge of B and mid and everything else because his team's working with so little. Jax is still there. They are kind of in the right place for this for now. So they know they're playing around two saved rifles. Heroic are not in a rush here. Player on the B lurk, I would imagine, is going to get some, uh, some time to do his research. He's actually descending. Interesting. So perhaps it is a full A commitment. The bomb in Palace, I mean, that was abundant, Alex. The silenced USPs here on Nexa and Amanek, they don't look scary, but if they stay tucked in and turtled away, it could be very problematic when you're going into the site, especially with Jax playing as forward as what he is this right here. Timing. This is perfect. Timing. Step made. Do they clear ramp? It's a re oh, they do. Stown so more. smart to swing on it. They haven't expected the third, but it is just the player with the USP. Yes, but apparently it's next to on a pistol. So there's always danger. But now it's been quelled and Kennedy instantly takes a step back. They should chase now. Stown should plant the bomb and the other two should put out a net. Run across the map. See if you can take this AWP out of Kenny's hands. The money's not great. The money is terrible actually over there on the G2 side of things. So. Doesn't feel like they want to go for this. We can see they're all stuck in positions over there on the A side. I mean, Chad, they're double digits against, you know, top three team in the world, and they are in the playoffs of ESL1 Cologne if they win this. I'm probably a little more cautious to be calling Hunt Down Kenny S. You're, you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, right? I love it. So you know Legolas? Yes. If you, what if you took away from him, would he suck with? Uh, uh, would he be no good? I know what you're trying to yeah. say. Yeah, if you took his bow away. Okay, so Kenny's Legolas in this situation. I Take think. the AWP out of the equation. He was pretty nifty with his daggers. Yeah, as well. he wasn't bad. All right, hey. guys, come yeah. on. He's a little you round. Not see him surfing down the staircases of Minas Tirith on a Urukai shield. Come that on, man. Sick. I can't believe we just went that deep. All right, well, you're trying to make a point there, Chad, and you've. you've well, I use Lord it, of the Rings because I know Alex is a fan. I don't really. I haven't even seen all of them. I kind of fell asleep in half of them. Wait, um, have you not watched them all the way through? No. There's a lot of great storytelling there. Yeah. Of good analogies you could use. There's no Counter Strike in it, so unfortunately uh, yeah, right. it can't hold my I'll attention. Tell you what, we'll watch it together. I'll give you like um, comparisons. Like there's Kenny S. Okay. <laughs> With this bow. With this bow, not a, not not necessarily the orb. Oh, All right, gosh. gang, we're back into the Counter Strike. Thank it's you for putting up with us. Stown mm. on his B lurk has evaded the nade. Two players from the G2 roster looking to set themselves up for a peek here. I don't know if Amalek's going to boost next after the lock or if he's just simply playing anti flash. Looks like he's actually just wants to put out potential Molotov. I mean, that's the uh, closest to an indication we have here. But at the moment, not a peep across Mirage. Everyone going through the motion, slowly starting to spread their creep. Did you ever cast a StarCraft game, Lauren, in your career? No. Not once. Not no. one. Me neither. No. Not for me. I, I enjoyed watching stuff. it. Of uh, Tasis and Artosis, always good. Oh, yeah, they were great. GG. <laughs> I remember being very, um, what's the word? Not star studded. When you're sh shot. Starstruck? Yeah, starstruck by have being sharing a cab with Artosis on mm. my first ever Gamescom. Ah. I was like, oh, like he's going to a fancy hotel and they yeah, dropped me going. off at like the, <laughs> the peasant <laughs> hostel. I think this is a B split coming in here, guys. They've been able to isolate mid and window. Oh, now coming up catwalk with the bomb, but. There's still two players rooted in the back of the B site. This is going to be difficult. That's a start. Big start. I like it on Look to B, though. Look rotation. Oh, Amanek this is going to get really uncomfortable if Amanek goes down. Nex is in trouble. He's relieved some of the pressure. He needs more. Double. Hunter as well. They're piping up all over the shop. It's onto Hunter. A 1v2. Very capable. And he's got his best weapon for, for it as well. The M4A1. One of the very few players that has crafted the art with the silent version. But exposes his back. Contessus punishes. Heroic. Starting to extend their lead. And I'm not seeing 
It's not all hunky-dory uh, in this G2 camp. But I want to remind you of two of the big rounds that Heroic lost within that first half. They were against Pistols. They did flub two rounds in that first half, two key rounds. Touche. Allowed G2 to get back into the mix of things here. So if we do see Deagles, and yes, we do. Nexa has one to his name. Jack spies one. Hunter grabbing on. Akeni with one. And Amanek on that 5-7. This is still a very, very deadly round. If Heroic lose yet another round to Pistols here, they will be kicking themselves. <laughs> Stack does give me a little bit of worry, but it shouldn't be a problem, right? Like, we're good. Uh, who is on watching the drop? Is Jax up top or below? He is up top. Wow. That's a that's, start. That's a belter. Tessa, though, does try and equal on oh, starting that. And just gonna do some caretaking, remove the rifle away. It's out the map. And now, maybe they consider that was a lot of presence there, instantaneously willing to fight. So, consider what they're up to. Yeah, you're bang on. I never write Amanek out of rounds on B, though. The perfect player to do a lot with a little. This is a prime position to do it. It's close quarters. One shot at this range to the head is a kill. He's got a little pocket AK and he's being a rascal. It's not clean. Stown can get into the site. So can his whole squad. Heroic. They're poised for 13 here. This is starting to become the underdog story that gave G2 a bit of a reality check. What do they have here? So little in front of them to play with. And confidence probably beginning to build for Heroic. They're into the flow of things. They've kept G2 slowed down and under the heel. There's Nexa and Hunter trying to find anything they can to maybe take a gun away for themselves. Not to be. Tessus is denying every step they take and Hunter just waiting it out. Nothing more to be done. This is a really good look for Heroic. Four alive. Bomb plant. It's going their way here. Yeah, and having a look right now, if we take stock of the frag distribution right here, Heroic, we've got Katie and 18 to the name, Nico and Bo up with 16 apiece, Tessas with 15, it's down with 12, it's quite the team effort. On the other side of things, Kenny S leading the charge with 22, 15 for Nexa, 14 on Amanek. This is where I get a little bit worried. Hunter with only 10, normally a beast on Mirage, he's dropped off and Jax with only 9. I can worry you even more, Chad. Yes, oh. please. Just to make this next six rounds as dramatic as possible, I want to remind everyone that the loser of this game will face Fnatic in an elimination oh, game. No. Lovely stuff there. So if oh, you're G2, no. you know that you are going to have to work a whole lot harder to secure a spot in the playoffs if you cannot close here. That's scary as hell. Heroic certainly not wanting to face Fnatic either. So your chances, three rounds away from realizing the dream of playoffs in Cologne. Starts right here, right now. D2 on the back foot, but far from out of this one. The double orb's been pat pulled, the panic button hit. We weren't massive fans of this double orb setup previously. Amanek tends to opt the B apps, but this time around will actually be positioned over towards Catwalk. You can see here, posing over towards middle. Next will actually be dealing with this push. So there's no real fight, but it... Oh, a little bit skittish there. Next are dropping that smoke very early, copping Tickle damage from the grenade, throwing one back of his own. Just a little bit of flirting going on over the B-bomb site, but nobody wanting to seal the deal. Oh. Oh, that was good initiative from Hunter. He could see that death was imminent if he sticks around. All right, Borup, chill out, man. They've completely left the B-apps now. We can see two individuals. That's going to be Nico and Stown going back through T-spawn. One going apps, one going halls. This does look like it wants to be a bit of an A crunch. It's time though. 35 seconds, it really isn't much. And there's, what, three flashes, two mollies? Not a single smoke to be put into play, so they kind of have to just play it out with what's in front of them. And Stown's already done that. Taking down Jax was the ramp player who's posted up close. And now Kenny going to be feeling a little bit more pressure as is Hunter, who's over by jungle. Going mollies B? go in. Where is that bomb going? They've got 15 seconds here. Amanek still stands as he stands tall. He's paranoid about the apartments. They're running out of time, 10 seconds. It's all on Kenny S at this point. He needs to get that bomb planter. No, he's gone. Nico wide swinging onto Kenny. No time. It's the he's got it. Straight through the box as Kadian was planting. G2 take the round. Amanek, he was helpless from B short. The bomb going down on triple and straight through the box. That's a crucial round. Yes, indeed, impact player. I want to see that one again. Check the time. Four seconds. It's 4.5 to plant. Kadian loses his brain through the box. 
He was late on the plant. You're right. Yeah, I don't okay. think they would have made it. You're absolutely was, right. I mean, I'd rather have Emenek do that for my team sure. than bank on it being that 0 0.5. Difference. Wow. Ooh, all oh, all right, wow. all right, all right. Back still against the wall here. Look at the buy coming out next at MP9. UMP for Amanek. AWP thrown over back into Kenny's hands. Rifles out in Jackson Hunter, the headshot machines. But they need more miracles like that. That was almost a heroic miscommunication mid round. Club. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Down's going to get caught. Pre fire. Tessus is there as well. Gaming. They know there's another. That flash came from somewhere. They're going to not have their knives out, you'd have hoped. Either way, into the B site. Heroic poised for 14. They may have forced to save. It. That's it. Heroic, two rounds away from playoffs. Look at Borup as well. He's so close. He's heard all these steps, I'm pretty sure, over by ramp. He definitely heard Kenny at least leaving the site. So he might be onto that if he fancies a little bit more of a chase on this. Heroic can afford to chase, though. Look at the money. Tessus has 4K. Stown, he's dead with 5,300. Nico has 34.50 to his name. Kadian with 6,150. They could chase if they want to, but yet again, they're just staying in the site. They're allowing G2 to have yet another crack. At it, allowing Kenny to hold on to the orb yet again. Boy. They just Take Legolas his bow. Exactly. I'm on board getting though, it now. Yeah. You're getting it now. Nice. It it's actually nice. kind of works. Yeah. I like oh, what I like you did it. there. He's appealing to you. Yeah. It's not Love necessarily something he knows, you know, and, and he's trying to make it digestible for me and my little brain. <laughs> Appreciate that. Mm, tiny, smooth brain. <laughs> 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 Alrighty. 14. I'm really starting to get excited for this one. I'm, I just know that Heroic, should they get to that playoffs? I will remind you of the teams in the playoffs already. Yeah, totally. It's a stacked list. Up with that you've caliber got your complexity. Right there. You've got your Astralis. You've got mm. uh, actually the Sprout Curveball. How many Danes are up there right now? Well, the full Astralis roster right. are the Danes. Complexity have Blame. Who am I forgetting? Config, config, as well. config. So seven. Um, and then no let's Danes say Heroic go Sprout. through. Heroic go through, you'd have 12. Right. Yikes. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and that's not even it. I mean, let's not forget Face picked up Kirby. They'll be battling versus Vitality. And did that happen already? No. No. Okay, cool. So Vitality Phase Clan is still to go down in an elimination <laughs> game. So very excited about that. Last one. timeout being used here from G2. They've been able to buy. The guns have been dropped across. I feel like calling it the business end of the game is probably an understatement. Heroic, they can buy basically, if they keep getting plants, for the remainder of this half. I don't feel like this one has overtime written all over it, but Heroic, the pressure could get to them. Remember, younger players, individuals who haven't been in situations like this before, but at least they have the favor of being in their bedrooms to go off. All right, then. We're at the pointy end of the karambit. Let's see how 26 shapes up. Tessis is looking a little aggro. Straight out and the spray. It's only one. My goodness, the spray transfer what? from Nico into Kenny. That's nuts. They don't have the numbers though. Borup and Stown up against the world. They've got their access to the site. They've got the smoke, but I don't see a plant. In fact, I can't even see the bomb now in the hands of Stown. He is giving it a good go. The fight not coming in clean. And a oh! second. Borup, he's done enough. It's only Jax now to clutch it out or heroic for a playoff point. Unbelievable scenes. Picking up the pace like that, I guess that's one way to play through the nerves and the second guessing. You just bang it in towards A, but now we've got Jax playing it back through and Borup's done enough. But this could be the answer. It's not as clean as you'd like, but it's still in it. Does he find Borup? Two kills already to make this round look like heroics. He Jax. has to hold his nerve here. He cannot afford to be going for these fights. Tuck into the corner. Clock is his best friend. Borup doesn't move a muscle and he's done enough. Jax accepts his fate. It is going to be 15 for Heroic. Outstanding stuff from Borup. Two of the youngest players never, and the newest players to Heroic's roster. And it's to both of them. Stown, planting, Borup, defending. I loved it. 15 to 11. Oh dear. Well, Heroic's biggest kryptonite in this game has been these low buys, these pistol rounds that have had some upset victories throughout, especially in that first half. The low buy scenario will be on the cards yet again, but G2 have no options. They have to fully invest. They have to shovel in. And here's those two frags yet again. Look at that. That is some clutch play right there. The control on the second was just... Oh, Ooh, it's, I mean, I've been so many M4s, but the utility's light. I thought they may have gone for a few more nades in this one here, but the AWP for Kenny once more. One, two diffuse kits in play. Excuse me. Is it a gamble? Look oh, at this. Oh, what? Sequence. What's giving them this idea? We're up to, folks. Okay. 
there was a smoke and a couple of flashes that went over the B site. That caused a massive rotation here, but as we can... Oh, a Mr. window, smoke, window smoke That is a mare. They've been forced to use a molly to supplement and forcing them into connector a little prematurely than perhaps they would have desired. Pressure mounting. Suddenly a mouse is just a little less grip. Sweat on the palm. It's time to game. Boosting Nico into the window the old-fashioned way. No sound cue and no teammate for Heroic. Nico found by Hunter to start us off. 60 seconds left on the clock for Heroic to put the pieces Ooh, in that's spot. order. Hunter's seen him. And that would have been the bomb being spotted too. So information relayed. Do want to keep our eyes towards B. Kenny's got the feeling, and it's not a bad one either. Two of the players in the apartments are going to start showing, which makes him feel even more secure here. Keep your eyes on the bomb still. They haven't seen Kenny. They only saw the player towards the kitchen side. Stout's found Kenny, but Cadian's success oh, is a problem. He's open. Tom is on way towards A. Yeah, but Nexa, he's already pieced this one together. He will be in CT in time. And he's not caught the flash. Tessus will go down. Nexa trying to save him. He oh. always pulls out the clutch moments. Tucked in. 18 seconds, Kadian will not have a safe space to plant. The smoke almost aids him, but it does enable uh, Nexa to play around it. With 10 Let's seconds left, he's rocked the clock. Amonek's got a frag. Kadian's got to hit one wild into the smoke. Imagine, imagine, Nexa plays it to perfection. And G2 will see another round of play. Ooh. It looks like enough. The A pivot was there, but Nexa was already halfway home. Oh, they definitely like staying in transition towards middle there, Heroic. But two of those rounds, they have gone a little bit awry there in the final moments. There will be a buy coming up for Heroic yet again. You heard me earlier say the bank has been built. But this was clutched by Nexa. Avoiding the flash, finding that frag, dropping the smoke, the indecision. Kadian not knowing how to approach this scenario, doing his best to get the bomb down to continue to stimulate the economy. But it was not to be. Yeah, window smoke, con smoke. There's a molly in play as well. Bomb in T spawn. They're selling the fake over towards B again. They like to bait out the utility early. This one feels like it will be a creep towards A, but look Ooh, at this. Double stack. I love that. Jackson Hunter going walkabouts down ramp. This could lead to a fake call. The timing, yeah. This could be misinformation. We'll see. Watch Kenny S. If he gets caught out. Oh, he's thinking about it. It's like, okay, but what if they're Palace? You've got that information. Right, ramp is clear. But that's the one element we do not know is Palace. Madness. And it contains a threat waiting an assassin Tessus is palace. watching. Yeah. Oh my god. Imagine if this is the first blood of this oh, round. the timing. Tessus, you have a job. Your responsibility. You have the bomb. Check your flank. Oh my god. Jax is about to cause disaster for Heroic. Two and a half. That will get him towards the finish line and certainly slow down Heroic in the Hunter. same. Hunter's going spawn. This is going to be probably the knockout punch. Does Stown even know it? He's definitely got an idea, but he's going to keep him pinned in there no matter what. And Borup can try and make some room in middle, but he's going to have to do more than just that. Hunter going to be forced to wait, but he's keeping track of Stout. Got to be careful. Oh, this is a proper counter-strike. Uh-oh. Now, with Borup finding that, uh -oh. you're going to start isolating players. You're going to start making there be some problems. This isn't comfy anymore. That's a great flash. Nice work. As now at least they've secured the bomb, and suddenly the threat that was building with Borup has been nullified. Yeah, absolutely. But this time, he's just going to have to resign himself to a save. Not ideal, as always on the T side, can be vulnerable to uh, any sort of hunting CT. But they're rather static, and G2 just going to be happy to uh, fend off. That's two of time the uh, match or playoff points. It'll be time for a pause here, if you're that of heroic. I don't think they've even used one. I think they're currently sitting with four in the back pocket, and this would be the perfect time just to talk things through, decide how they want to approach the last few rounds of this game. You can either go for the buy right here, which several members can afford. He can see this flank again. Such a risk to be taken by G2, not just sitting back and waiting for the game to be dictated, taking the fight to them. And they peeled apart, but it will be the buy. So they didn't even take the time out for this one here. Mid smokes once more, and it's going to be an AP straight away. Bloody hell. This is something else, isn't it, Alex? This is truly a gritty battle between these two. Heavy Aileen. We do have the late kind of work from Cadian towards middle, but again, the CTs are also posted up here, but I feel Jax's position is, it's a scary one in Sandwich. I'm not sure how, how I feel about it, but I'm sure the proof's gonna be in the pudding. Yeah, a Tessus one dig is not out of the realms of possibility here. Jax goes one for one. Tension mounting. 
And they will waterfall off the back of a couple of flashes. That's Kenny. It's not caught out. Quick cut on the obs there. It's down. Does manage to find him. He was ramped, so this should be Hunter's frag. It's a hard shot to hit. His gleaming bold head visible over the bricks. Is that a push? And look at that CT flank. Is he going straight to Next, T spawn? Uh, There's no way Stown's ready for this. Nor Cadian. Yep. Can't believe it. He truly <laughs> cannot believe it. The comms is there at least. It's something. It's a silver lining. There's one in Palace as well. Counter-Strike is looking Let's different right it. now. Nico's got his knife out. G2 doing it different, doing them dirty to finish this one off and to close this gap. OT suddenly becoming a very real possibility considering that Heroic put everything they could muster into this round. But there I am, discounting Stown. The bomb under the grasp of Hunter. He's not opted to go for it, so it's a little peculiar. Wants to just keep hold of his weapon given the financial uh, difficulties they'll be dealing with into round 20, well, 30, excuse me. Yeah, we are right down to full regulation limit. Oh dear, it's only going to be a $2,400 loss bonus for Heroic going into the next round. That means at best we have Tech Nines in play, armor, and a little bit of utility. <laughs> Not how you want to be finishing off regulation. How so, did we get here? Well, they haven't taken a pause, so this would be the time to actually have one to really, really talk things through. The fact that Stown here can buy into a smoke and a flash if you would like. Smoke at HE, maybe a Molotov and a Flash. You're really not working with a lot of either smoke flash combo. Everyone else buying on in Tech Knife Acadian, Deagles and a Galil. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Acadian's really quick to mid here. <laughs> Is he looking for the fight early towards Hunter? I'm not sure what he's up to, but there's pressure across the map. The T's are definitely showing their hand, and Hunter has absolutely outdone Katie in there. There is a fight back, and that's in Nico fighting Jax. But this is a shutdown, and it's Hunter leading the way. My word, 15-15, you blink and you miss it. G2 just turned up. Yeah, we're going to take a quick one and prepare for overtime in our third map for a spot in the playoffs. Football team are reaching the 45 minute mark of their Champions League final. So he's going to want to finish this one quickly. He's a Deddy fan as well, isn't he? He is. Oh, he's hardcore. So he's going to look to open this round up with a bang. And he's already got himself some good ground covered here in middle. He might Adrian. have. Is it Tessus there? He might have him. Yeah, he has. That fire burning under him maybe encouraging a little more play, but it's going to encourage the T's to go towards B and maybe. They're going to be in trouble if they do. Kenny is feeling it, but a little in the open, almost careless. Yeah, almost like he wants to get this one done quick. Bit too exposed. Bombs loose as well. Heroic are in absolutely no rush. Hunter was so influential into pulling us into that overtime. It was a triple kill from him in quick succession. He's got a real affinity for the connector position, but he's not opting to patrol in the same manner this round. It will be a bit of a... Battle of timing between Borup and Hunter. His plan, once he's in this position, is to just sit, sit and press pause until his team have decided on their intentions. You can see they're rotating back through T-spot. Some of the keys for G2 to even get to this point was aggressive mid-round plays. This time, they're like statues, stuck quite passive. No real information to their name. But as the clock ticks lower, 35 seconds now, starting to get a... Good idea of where this one's going to finish. The bomb over towards the A ramp. One palace, one connector. The crunch is coming in. So ideally contact ramp, then Borup reveals himself. He'll be able to catch Jax's back turned, and there's the contact they were waiting for. Borup's going to start to move, as is Nico, and he's being held at bay. G2, oh, it's perfect from their riflers. Hunter and Jax say, find another site. A is ours. So looking at this now, I think Heroic might try and pull out something a little bit fast. We saw the round where they blew out onto the A site. Borup needed the double there while protecting Stown to plant the bomb. But it has been a lot of this default spread, bait out the B utility, play mid transition, hope that you catch the rotations off. And here, well, they were met with an absolute wall of a defense there on that A site. G2 are coming alive. You can see Jax getting fired up. Heroic might need a change of pace. And it looks towards middle four, very fast. Who's on the other side? Kenny. Let's see how long it... Wow. What's that answer to that? Complete mid-control here. 
Even mulling back to short position. CT's going walkabout here towards a ramp. Needing to change things up. Oh! He's caught with it in his hand, fortunately. Well. Jax and Hunter, the A defense, just evaporated. Nico and Borok clicking their mouse in succession and opening up an A site. This is the return. A change of pace for Heroic translates into the equalizer. Or at least it looks that way. Nexa and Amalek have got all the cash they need to give it a good go, though. Just don't know where the hell they're supposed to find an opening. Cadian spots one. Ugh. Oh, the failure and the needs. Not pretty. And Nexa gets punished for it, of course. Um, oh. Hello. <laughs> I think they know where he is. Oh, now Alex. Oh, I'm the best of times. This could be nice. Or not. It could be actually quite horrible. He was just pointing to the uh, the floorboard that needs some work. He was just making Down sure he knew where to uh, address his attention. Last round of the first half of our third maps over time. First to 19, as it nicely says at the top there, so I don't have to keep saying it. I like that. That's a Oh, thank you, Vlad. Respect to Vlad. What was that? I was looking away. It says first. It says first to nineteen. So when we get into like you know the quadruple overtime, and you're like, which one is it now? You're like trying to do the maths. I used to be so. I used to have a little tally going yeah. normally because yeah, yeah, yeah. my brain no do math good. No, no. But now it does it for us. So much love to our uh, new HUD development. B bombs on its way to B at the moment. Four CTs on A. Two T-sided orbs as well. This is very unusual. What is going on? Especially for a fast B play. Oh, oh, Kenny! He's been caught out twice as the first casualty for G2 in their CT rounds on overtime. Let's see if he can survive a little longer. Amanek does well to find Borup full flash, and a second as well. G2 filling the feed with three. Now just heroic, working on the two man left. If he can recover the bomb, round on. Caden with his AWP is being uh, stared down. Rotation kind of hinges on Nico here. Big kill. He lives. Barely, but he lives. 7 HP. Oh, next is doing it anyway. Mm, but God. It, it does kind of actually work in Heroic's favor depending on their pace, right? Kenny's in Palace. Nexa, if he's working on the flank, that does mean there'll only be one B defender for about 20, 25 seconds. It's going to be a question of as Nico arrives, do they go contact? Cadian just walk out. A flash from Nico, perhaps. What is the call? Cadian's the one that not only has to pull this across the line, he has the most health, but he's also... The leader, flash in. Cadian takes some space. It's Nico though, who's gonna have a nightmare to get across here. Oh, I don't know. If oh, there we go. Trying to bait the shit. I'm gonna make that mistake, Cadian. Time to hear the loud roar from one of the most passionate Danes I have met. Uh. Oh, this timing is horrible. Two from the right, one from the left. Back to the wall. He scoped in, doesn't unscope. He's trying to catch the timing right, but I think it's time to tick here. They're out about. And Alex is almost off his chair, but it will be the CTs to get it on the board. Wow, I thought he was going to do something crazy. I thought that was going to look like that yeah, one. No, no. I just fell off my chair. Jeez Louise, I thought you had it. Can I like you... the faith. You're like, Ugh. I did my inhale of breath when I'm playing. It's like I'm playing the game for him. Regardless, that was <laughs> our first half, and so. G2 will come in with the advantage. Two rounds required on their T-side. How were side. G2's T-side? I've forgotten it. It feels so long ago now. Couldn't even recall it. Yeah, I literally don't remember what their T-side was like. They uh, had those two rounds where they had one with pistols, right? Oh. Otherwise, the chips were pretty much down. The early stage of the here, game was Chad? quite forced by you, but the double orbs, that's what's in question right here for Heroics. Downs picked up one. Cadian on the other. That's a CT smoke. Deep ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are going to throw their ace smokes all the same, but they're so paranoid about ramp, it may slow them down. Given how undefended it is at the moment, that may be beneficial. In fact, I'm seeing two members of G2 throw their utility and now start to regather elsewhere. Failed flash from Jax, no longer going to be as intimidating. This mid setup What's trifecta of Doom right there. So they have full mid control right now. It looks like they're more than happy to play retake towards the A site. And they have information with Stounds Orb deep into the B apartments here. So, early warning signals across the map. Like the setup in middle. It's time for Nico and Cadian. Tessus was there as well. I'm down. And that's perfect. Heroic, they were not thrown off by leaving A so open. I mean, they have the control. The bomb in mid, you're absolutely bang on, Chad. This really does make things awkward. Amonex doing his best just to find something on B. Well, that's exactly what he wanted. A start. Ooh. Tessus catching nades now. Maybe Amonex can go for us a little stylish 
finish, not to be equalized by Heroic. And so we really are going to go all the way down to the wire. These two are just like splitting hairs at the moment, it feels like. So it, it kind of comes out of the norm. <laughs> Whose camera is just... That dude's living in a four by three life. Like people happy. <laughs> um, yeah, Chad, this is this is a weirdly close game, it feels like. Yeah, and both teams having affinity for the double orbs to bail them out on their CT signs. So G2 will have another crack at it here. Whoever wins this round will be one round away from converting the series or guaranteeing themselves double overtime. Fast towards apps will be Amanek. Lots of nades towards middle here. Early Molotov going to dissuade that of Jax from taking control. Down can't overstay his welcome here because coming through underpass will be Hunter. Avoids the nade. But look at this. It's an A ramp push. They're going to have early information on if it is an A attack. And they're more than happy to give up the corridor of middle here, which is normally what we see fought over round after round. And there's a slower pace. Oh, the pace has definitely hit the brakes. And as it stands... Maybe they check the brackets in that little two-minute break we like, talk. Mm, hmm. Not Fnatic. Fnatic, uh, <laughs> Fnatic with pressure as well. It's Fnatic with that elimination pressure. They tend to uh, thrive when the pressure mounts. I certainly wouldn't want to be the team yeah. facing between, standing between them and a playoff spot. Right. If you can avoid it, do yeah. so. And uh, definitely turning the screws a little bit here. But the T-side now making their approach. Oh. down, gifted one there. No pressure really coming from him. He doesn't even back down either. He's waiting for more. And he gets just deleted. Amanek there, now Katie, and the next in line. Gonna get one, but now the pressure comes in, trade comes out. The T's have the sight, but the quick flank. Oh, I don't know if Kenny's gonna be anticipating this. He does tend to do cursory glances in his gameplay, but that is enough for Borup. 25 seconds. Bomb's not down yet. Why haven't they planted? Haven't it's not. They planted. Well, Hunter doesn't matter with his reactions like that. 180 under Tessus's brain. Bomb needs to be planted. The Molotov isn't gonna stop it. Leaping fast, Bora, he's feeling. Double peak does come in from G2. They're doing everything in their power, but Hunter walks in and it's the double. Great play from Nexa and Hunter, but my goodness, an oh. exhale more than a celebration. These two here right now. What a shot. The first was glorious, and then I don't know, he's just got friction burn. Oh, oh, damn. I sense gamer or very fast movement regardless. <laughs> Tessa's going to be a bit frustrated right there. Probably should have converted that kill. He's dropped off a little bit. One of the stars of the previous two games with the 18 kills to his name. Cadian's leading the way with 28. But right now it's do or die. The double ops once again from Heroic. They gambled on two ops on the B setup. And now it looks like G2 go back to normal. The mid control smoke will come oh. on out. And a miss to start the round there. So a bit of a standoff in apartments. Sorry. Oh, he's got his knee. Wait, oh. Hunter. Why oh, is Hunter dear. just different right now? That last round and then... I, th I thought he had that. He almost did. I mean, 29 HP ain't much, but a 4v4 and such aggression and confidence. Final round. G2 Esports, four frags away from the playoffs at ESL1 Cologne Online. And Heroic battling for another chance. Kadian, is he going to push? He's in the underpass with the AWP. He's the first rotator towards the B bomb site. Tessus, with only 29 points of health, has picked up the AWP, has another Molotov and a flash to work with. I don't like how open he is. He's got 30 HP, that's one AK. Oh, wow, well, it's in his head. He does manage to take down Kenny S, yes, now dead. 3v3, flank coming in from Kadian, as you outlined, Chad. This is the all in, but this is a retake on B. It's never comfortable. It's never satisfying. There isn't enough smokes and mollies on the T side, at least. They won't be able to hold Heroic back in any stretch. I think I'd just see a recovered incendiary from the corpse of Stown. That could work nicely if the clock continues to run down. Nico Borup from kitchen position. And it works wonderfully. Borup flushes out Amanek. Will they expect the second? Nexa does cut down the app's presence. Borup needs to check his corners. Clean. Jax eliminates and G2.